Let's do another build. We're just a few weeks out from our first few shows of the year and some things have changed. I've decided to play guitar live, so I need a pedal board. After we build this pedal board, it's gonna live in a Pelican 1615. We're gonna get that 1615 tour ready. So stick around because the 1615 part of this might really help you prepare for your next tour or next handful of shows. But let's get building this pedal board first. Let's open up this temple board. Uh, the reason I went with the temple board instead of anything else, it's really their whole system of how to mount pedals. It's really cool. I played with it a little bit the other day when this came in, but this whole system just seems neat and clean and tidy to me. And that's something I very much so value of making things nice and neat and clean is to the best of my abilities. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I even start trying to mount any pedals to this thing is we've got these side jacks here. Um, well, these side, like little panels that you can take off and put their modules or things like that. For me, I've bought this three blank space. Uh, it's D sub connectors, and we're gonna put it right here on this side. And I'm going to put a power con on there. I'm going to put an XLR out and I'm going to put a MIDI out. We're gonna use MIDI out because I wanna be able to control, uh, the HX stomp is the main thing here, the thing that's gonna be changed at all. But I'd love to be able to control that from Ableton. I agreed to play guitar, it's not that I didn't want to. I love the ability to just focus on being at the front of stage and being engaging to people. And if I'm gonna play guitar, I don't wanna have to worry about any pedal changes literally at all. So having something like the HX Stomp and being able to use MIDI to control it from Ableton is going to be the only way that I am going to be cool with doing this. But I am excited to do it. So let's put this little panel together. So XLR out, which is what we're putting in here. Let's talk about why. So the idea is that we're gonna go from the HX Stomp to the Walrus Audio Canvas Mono, which is their DI box and then we're gonna go out of that DI box to this panel and then out from there. Why not go quarter inch? I'll tell you why. If you're running cable, you can run balanced cable, which is like XLR, left, right, ground. You can run balanced cable a lot further, like I think like 300 feet before you start to experience any signal loss. Uh, with instrument cable, it's not even close to that. The idea of why you're doing it this way, it's just to maintain signal quality. Temple's got a bunch of cool modules. The reason I decided to do it this way is because since I'm using the Solo, yeah, the eight, Solo 18, I don't have a ton of stuff and I don't want things coming out of both sides. Okay, before we place pedals, let's talk about the power supply. So I got this One Spot Pro. I know that there's the, how you call it, Chocks. I know they've got their own module for this and I know that it's cool. I definitely considered it. I know they've got their own version of these low profile guys as well. The reason I did not go with it for this specific build, this is literally the only reason, is because the way the power supply is, it's not a normal IEC, which going IEC to PowerCon is way easier than trying to go to the, all those different converters and all this other stuff. This is a small board. I don't want all this stuff going on underneath. I don't need to make this more complicated than I have to. So, one spot it is. All right, I am definitely a fan of this. I built a lot of pedal boards, but honestly, this is making things way faster. Bro, shout out Temple. I didn't get sent any of this stuff. I wish I did, but this is incredible. Like, I think everybody should be building boards like this. I really honestly decided to do the temple stuff from watching the uh, Samson guys. I can't remember the guy's name. But yeah, his YouTube channel is really great and I, I saw how he does some of his stuff and I was like, man, I wanna, I wanna try some of the things that way. This isn't really like a pedal conversation type video. The only thing I will say really of why I chose things is I already had this light speed and I know I don't necessarily need it, but when I was playing a Kemper for the longest time, I always ran this light speed in the back. And to me, running a drive kind of before things, I don't know why, I just felt like it opened everything up and made it sound a little less in the box. And I always felt like there was a notable difference. So, since I've already got it, gonna use it. All right, I've got everything placed. All right, so there is some trade-offs with this board. With the holes being where they are, you kind of have to go with that flow. But, 
the ability to be able to move pedals around that fast without having to deal with dual lock, which takes an act of God to get up, or Velcro that just sucks, it's worth it. I mean, it's just, and it's so clean. I went ahead and ran one cable in there uh, just because I needed to because the way this was gonna sit, um, which how things are gonna work is we're gonna have to go sideways with these two guys here, and that is how it works. Uh, but if it's fine, Everything's in a hole and it's good. And now I just need to find the right spot to put the power back on, which I believe is gonna be kind of right in the middle of all this or maybe towards the top corner. But the front works and that's really the hard part. Uh, okay, now let's get a towel and flip this thing over so we can work on the bottom. All right, first thing we'll wire under here is power. So I'm gonna take the IEC that came with the One Spot Pro and I'm just going to trim it down so it just goes literally from point A show you. So it literally is just going to go from point A to point B. Really small jump there. With thick IEC cable, honestly the best way to take off the shielded like rubber part of the cable is really just take something like a box cutter to it because unless you have some really big wire strippers, which I don't, this is the best way to do it. You just have to be really careful because you don't want to cut through any of the interior cable. So I just realized that I have like a hundred right angle XLRs, but none of them are female. So we're gonna pause until that comes in. So YouTube magic now. After I cut the camera yesterday, I decided to go ahead and finish out the board. Like I said, I was missing the female XLR to go from the DI to the output here. And it's gonna take like a week to come in. Um, so I just decided to go ahead and finish out this board and I'll do some B-roll here to kind of show what it looks like. But it's done and it's honestly pretty sick. And I will kind of give like a last minute few thoughts on this before we move on to the meat of this video in my opinion. So board looks clean and good. I had to do things a certain way to get everything to fit. This board is pretty small, um, but it fits everything I need. And yes, I know this tuner is sideways, and, but the HX Stomp can also be a tuner if I need it. This is really just a wireless for a small, platform, but this is the way it worked out. The bad part about this board is you just kind of have to play Tetris a little differently than you normally do because of the way the holes in the base plates kind of line up. But the cleanliness of it really makes up for it. I love how neat and clean the board looks and I just love the look of the board. So all in all, I definitely would go with a temple board again. I may plan slightly better next time, but I would definitely go with a temple board again. And the bottom of this bad boy is very clean. Minus, this is the cable for the XLR. Once it comes in, I'm gonna do that off camera. It's just an XLR. If you wanna see me solder, go watch the first in your rack video. But everything's clean, zip tied everything down. It all works, I tested it last night. It power works, cables work, everything's good to go. Now that this is done as much as it's gonna be done until this cable comes in, let's move on to the Pelican case. So I've got a Pelican 1615 that I've had for a while. We're gonna put Trek Pack in, and then we're gonna make this kind of the ultimate little tour case um, because today, which this is coming out in like a week or so, we just announced that we're playing in North Carolina and South Carolina with one of our favorite bands, May. So if you live in North Carolina or South Carolina, come see us and you can see all this cool gear in person and I will definitely talk to you about it because I love to talk about this stuff. But let's grab the Pelican case and move on to the fun part. So we've got the 1615 here. We're gonna put the Trek pack in now. I also have a lid organizer coming in on Friday. So we're gonna do this part today and then I'm gonna finish this up with one more additional day and get this lid organizer in. Hopefully you can use this as a guide and make something similar to this. This will be very helpful for me to cut down on the amount of cases we're bringing uh, and hopefully it's the same thing for you. So let's go ahead and start building this thing out. If you've never used Trek pack before and you don't know what it is, it's basically this kind of thick, hard plastic foam that has these little bitty holes, if you can see them there, that you can use these to basically make divider walls and kind of section out this case. The track pack system, if you're unfamiliar with it, you put it together with these little U-shaped metal pins. They go in both walls to hold them together. And then you've got this, this cutter tool thing that slices it up to make these things fit. And you can obviously customize what you're doing here. this wall put in 
to block off the pedals. And then I've got the antenna can sit in this big pocket if I take it apart, which honestly that's fine. Uh, it takes seconds to screw that thing anyways. I could go up against the wall and create another small channel, or I'm thinking about potentially leaving this open, but let me talk about gaff tape for a second. If you're not familiar, um, this is gaff tape, or this is gaff tape. Gaff tape is what we use to kind of color code everything. And if you're trying to be really pro, they usually say what side of the stage they go on. You can have your name on it. So like our in-ear rack has Witsit, IEM rig, and I need to put what side of the stage it goes on, but I need to wait till our rehearsal for that because I need to test it out with this new rig and a few other things. But you really want three pieces of tape saying three different things. If there's a monitor tech or there's a stage hand helping you out. They can look on the case and see, oh, this goes stage left, stage right, center. Just helps move things along. And the other thing is it also kind of helps your entire band be able to pack up together. For me, I'm the singer of our band. I'm obviously the real gear nerd here. But when the show's over, usually I head to the merch table immediately, or I'm talking to people and I can't always help pack up. So for the rest of the band to be able to just kind of follow along with the tape and follow the other things, they can knock something out for me while I'm trying to sell merch or something else. So I wanna make sure that I've got spots in here for the gaff tape. So orange is our color. Black's a good thing to have. I would make sure you've always got a black one just cause you never know when you're gonna need it. Um, but I'd pick a color. There's plenty of colors, gaff tape, you can find it on Amazon. And if you're a Christian emo band that is probably gonna play with us, then don't pick orange because that's our color. So don't be a copycat, just pick a different color. There's tons of different colors. I wanna make sure I've got a little wall here that just holds in those two rolls of gaff because I'm always gonna have those two rolls of gaff. If you're gonna build out one of these cases, if you're gonna build out like a tour box kind of case, what I would do is make a list on your phone of all the things you think you're gonna need to go in this case. And look over it for a few days. Make sure you're not missing anything. But having this list here is how I know what else needs to go in here. What I'm planning on putting in the top lid. I think at this point, we're gonna wait until the top comes in. I'm not quite sure what might fit in the top and what won't fit in the top, but we're at a great spot. So let's stop here and we'll pick up on Friday. All right, our lid organizer is in. So now let's talk about the different things that I'm gonna put in here. So we've got two IEM packs in here, which I've labeled in our orange gaff. We've got two more IEM packs in here, which is the four of us. At one point we were almost a five piece band, so we do have an extra IEM pack. At this point, I'm just saving it in case we have a guest or for some reason, if we go back to five pieces, but we have it with us as just a backup. So these I'm putting in this pouch right here. Okay, and then to stay in the wireless train here, we've got the guitar wireless pack. Let's just put that up here in this little slot. And then my vocal mic, let's put that one in this one. Then I thought it would be very helpful for us to have a bunch of Sharpies on hand. So I ordered some black ones and some silver ones so I could write on the black gaff tape. I ordered just all these off Amazon. So let's put these in here as well. One of the last things I wanted to go ahead and put in here was my backup set of ears, my JH5s. Uh, let's just go ahead and throw those in here. Because if I need them, it's gonna be with this gear. It's not gonna be anywhere else. I don't have anything to go into this bottom spot yet. But other than that, I mean, we're, we're show ready. So let's see what's all in the case. We've got my vocal mic, which is an SEV7. We've got my Sure Wireless Pack. We've got some Sharpies. We've got my backup set of molds, which is JH5s. We've got nothing here. And then we've got all of our IEM packs going right here. Then down here, I've got XLRs for drums, which will eventually be given to our drummer, Emma. I've got a crazy idea to build her out of case whenever she's ready to do it. I think it's gonna be the ultimate like fly case for drummers. I've got her XLRs in here for now. I've got our multi-pin fan out for our in-ear rack. I've got my loom for my pedal board and then the power con cable that powers the rack. Got gaff tape right here, got orange, black, and then we've got the antenna here with its B and C cables in here, its connector piece, and then this piece also, it's an LP claw that I'm just using to hook on the back of the rack. So you're prepped, you're ready to go, you're ready to kind of face anything that 
is thrown at you at a venue. One thing that I'll probably wind up doing over time is throwing in backups of things as I can, you know. I'm probably gonna wind up putting batteries in here. Maybe it's more batteries for this, definitely batteries for that. I'll probably wind up carrying some extra XLRs once Emma takes her XLRs out, maybe additional vocals, just stuff like that. Um, but I hope this helps. Hope you enjoyed this video. I love doing all these videos. I love doing the in rack builds. I love doing this build. Like I said, I've got a, another idea for a drum case build that I don't think I've seen anyone quite do the way I'm imagining it. But if you want me to keep doing videos like this, subscribe to this channel because it shows me that you guys are watching and comment what kind of build I should do next. If you want to see the drum video, let me know so I can show Emma. If you want me to build like the ultimate all-in-one case for bass players, I don't know. Give me an idea in the comments below. I love building stuff. But thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.